I think I have finished working on the logic behind generating all the stuff, so it's now time to actually make it work. So I can, for example, give myself a pair stool, and it's gonna look like a. Okay, never mind, I guess. Everything looks like a bubble. <laughs> Okay, this is an interesting bug. So, can I just do this and recompile? Yes, I just used wrong ordering. Right, it's, it's fine. I have the bars to the drawer. Now, there are no translations. Oh, the reason is because the name here is just bars to. So, I will need to change that where I use display name. So I have it over here. And instead of using unit name, it needs to use just the name and maybe call it something like display name. So here, replace display name with... I need to add the material here. It takes a long time to compile because it's Python, but once it compiles, it should be good. Right. So we have key and we also have the padlock because the padlock works and key doesn't work because it's going to be annoying to debug by the way because it's going to take so long to compile. Okay, reload started. Now I get I give myself red key and it's called red key. Perfect. So now this part works as well. Now we need to actually create some logic and begin with, for example, if I have a bubble bench, I want to place it somewhere. Now, if I place it, it's actually an... Uh, oh, I can't actually show it, but it's a it's an item, item frame with a stone pattern. So now we need to actually change it into a block. So we have tick function. And then we want to, for example, so as so let's just get the data of this thing. So if we take a look at this data, we have um, invisible tags. So the first important tag is bbln.place. So as an item frame, we have tag of uh, place. We also, can, we also need to limit it to 8, because if you were to place a lot of blocks, you don't want them all to be processed in one tick. Right? This would be, it would just cause a lag. So what we have here, we have already load registry. I don't actually have these functions. Wait, I'm gonna reload or regenerate, regenerate cache. What else can I do? Click. Redownload completion date, maybe like this. Maybe now it's not gonna show. Yeah, now it's only the real directories. So we have the placer, or I guess like blocks. Or oh, no, I'm just gonna call it placer, and then it's gonna be tick. Now, so now as this thing, we need to place it. So of course it's gonna kill it. So it doesn't need to exist. So if so, oh, sorry. Execute if. So if this block is air, which I'm, I will have the tag for. So this tag is just air, light, and all the different types of air. I don't include structure void though, because I use structure void for blocks. So if it's air, then it can place. But if it's not air, it cannot place. So it needs to like return itself. So run return. Can I run this? I guess. Wait, can I call a function? I can. Okay, perfect. So placer and then like uh, return block. Uh, return. So like something like this. So we're gonna say error. And I need to place bubble bitch. Okay, it says error. Perfect. Now, since it uses run return, it actually doesn't kill itself. Which is like, I guess I just do like this. Yeah, now it says error, and if I place it here, it doesn't say error. Perfect. Now it needs to actually get it, so. 
it's gonna just do it with uh, what, what data do we actually have here i don't remember i think it's item with the capital okay so it's with entity we get the item tag bubble lanius right and inside of bubble lanius we have block properties and we have block data so block data is what we need because here we have the display name we have the base unit and then the name right so what we can do is just say a function spawn bubble lanius which is a function that's generated so it's it doesn't auto complete it but it's going to be unit followed by the name or i guess it's just name right i guess so let's let's see if it works and just wait for it to compile just uh, after it compiles i can't reload now i can so you can see it, it works it gave me the same item back okay i am going to disable screen keys now because it's pointless i also want to like play sound i usually use stone gather take results for this and also play some particles so i used grid for this type of thing so it's like this speed one normal to everybody okay so now reload or i guess not yet yeah because it's still compiling still not yet now uh it's a bit too it's too big i guess i guess this is fine right so if you try to place it somewhere where it can't be placed it's going to return unless you're in creative mode though so execute if entity uh can i can you check who placed an item frame i don't see any owner properties so i guess you can't uh, then just check if so as the closest player if the game mode is created by the closest player that isn't spectator because spectators can't place blocks so if you're in creative then just do nothing over here so now you just can't place it over here and now it just does nothing unless i'm in survival and then i can do this and get all my blocks back perfect this part works so now if it's there then you can actually place so we're going to place her place so how do you place a block if you summon an item display now this actually all needs to be a line xyz positioned like this so it's in the middle of the block since it's in the middle of the block you summon it's gonna have an item ID it's gonna be now uh, unfortunately it's not gonna work LSP doesn't work on this version yeah so I'll have to add this later now of course don't forget that it needs tags right so the tags are gonna be bubble lanes local dot block now I add this namespace so that if you want to kill everything that this data pack has you can it's just like for convenience you have local block and then sounds like local name and then the name over here okay so i place and okay i, I didn't even have to do anything it, it already works now the problem is if i go to f3 you can see here in the bottom left that it's rendering this entity at all times how do you fix this? You just say width is and height are one block. Yeah. So now if it's not on the screen, it's going to stop rendering. 
And now it needs to also copy all of the data. So data, modify. So region, summon the display. And region. I need to place the base block, which is here. It's just called the base. So region, place base block. Set block. Base. Like this. Then execute if block. So if it's a barrel. No, if it's a container. So Apollonius container. Data modify entity. No, block. So just set the custom name. You can see that it works, and but it didn't rename it. So first of all, the clipping is happening because the barrel needs to be bigger. So Okay, so I place it and it works. So region tags. So we say execute as. So if you have the tag called local uses brightness, clicks. run brightness, set value 15f and no block 15 and then sky 15. It's fixed now. Now, I'm gonna take a look below. It looks fine, right? There's no clipping anywhere. And if I get far, it disappears. Which I guess is fine, right? I don't really want to remove this. Like, if I want to, I can actually make it happen. So I'd maybe add a setting to make blocks visible from anywhere. Scoreboard objectives add local.settings. Settings set default like this. So it's gonna take the name, which is gonna be global dot increased U range. We can also add region settings. So execute if score matches one run this command which is going to be just says view range to something like 1000 float you can see that you can see it from any distance away as long as the block exists so it's just great now if i break it it's not going to actually break which is something we're gonna fix now so we have this part so now execute as all the players, we're gonna add a player tick. Now, players are gonna tag a item display, tag block with a block, distance, I guess 32 blocks away, block in queue. So load it. Now the reason I do this is because I don't want to update all blocks everywhere. So I'm as item display tag local block. So every block is going to be updated. However, not. So we have block tick. Now if it has the tag of being loaded run function uh, while loaded right so we add this function now it's going to obviously remove is loaded and for now it's just going to so it should do it's, it's gonna say one in the bottom unless i'm too far right and it's only is going to appear from this distance yeah this is pretty good so now this can be removed over here and execute if block is air now Pablenius breaks block right so which is going to be just air save air and then air uh, void air which over here we can just add the reference to Pablenius breaks block Okay, so if it breaks block, then function break. 
So now you can see that if I break the block, it also disappears. And I mean, it's creative. And it still doesn't work. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to print out this NBT. Now this is a preprocessor that I wrote that helps me debug things. So if I break it now, it has the base, base item ID none, by the way. I guess the reason is because I don't need this. Okay, so now it works. Okay, perfect. So now you can actually break this box and they're gonna drop. Now, it's great, you know, but I would like it to also copy the properties. So, right, so I take this selector over here and say, say data modify entity. So basically I, I just need to change this from tag to be uh, entity, entity tag dot item that tag like or like this a very long one right it, it's it's if i now modify it so one of them is special and is it really special though it is so now it remembers data that i set it it still doesn't change the name over here though custom name maybe perhaps i need to quote it so now if I just reload, now it works. So you can see the name is Power Bench. Let's check that it works with other blocks. So for example, something like a Django cabinet. I can place it and it works. You can see that it has no rotation yet, right? So this is the next thing that needs to be done. I am going to go over here though and check all the values that there are. So I have sound. So let's do this. So we have the place function, place base block, and let's play the sound. So we have place sound. Now this is going to be just sound, and like this. Press the sound done. Now we need the facing. Now the reason is because it would be like facing entity that isn't game mode spectator uh, feed. So facing player, it would rotate, it would store the rotation and then return the value over here. So now it works. So it's gonna face the player every time that you place it. Now it has more rotations, but I'm, I'm not gonna add them yet. Now there is also GUI. We just make it a little bit more readable, but without really much else. So brightness fix, you have the place uh which it doesn't need to copy block states which it does need to copy maybe no it doesn't actually and now no base it does need to copy so so if it needs a custom place function then it's gonna call it of course so it's gonna as if we go if we go to references and we just look at all of them. This one, it's it just uses custom place. Now this one. So some of them use the block type, which is like light, seat, etc. So if I now get myself something like a bench, it also has different parameters. So now we have the this part, which is great. Now we need to actually add a seat, etc. But that's gonna be later because I think this is enough already. It's been for me. Obviously, I'm gonna edit most of it out, but it, for me, it's more than an hour. 